Amanhã a polícia lhe chia de tabar longe Se eu disse é dele toco a diola O moado a galerê Nambawa O banhinha com a duro Só no moro uma de rola the journey to become the senator, representing the largest senatorial district in terms of population in Nigeria, Senator Solomon Olamilikon Adiola, a.k.a. Yayi, began with his nomination to contest for the vacant seat alongside about 10 other contestants under the All Progressives Congress, APC. Before the primaries held at Agege Stadium, about four of the contestants stepped down for Senator Adiola, and in the primary, Yai scored well over 4,000 votes to defeat four other candidates whose votes totaled less than 600. From this wide acceptability, Yai mounted an unprecedented colorful campaign that combined a roadshow of giveaway freebies and empowerment tools, as well as town hall meetings across the 10 local government areas of Lagos West. He campaigned vigorously for himself and all other candidates of his party, including President Muhammadu Buhari and Governor Akimumi Ambodi. <laughs> At the end of the rescheduled presidential and national assembly elections from February the 14th, 2015 to March the 28th, 2015, Senator Adiala became the duly elected senator to represent Lagos West of some 13 million people, winning his closest rival with over 70,000 votes. Following a muddled-up inauguration of the 8th Senate on June the 9th, 2015, where a few members of APC colluded with PDP members to upstage majority of APC senators loyal to the party, including Senator Adiola, to elect the Senate leadership, Senator Adiola held an inaugural dinner at Nikon Luxury Hotel, Abuja, with over 1,000 constituents from Lagos present. The fallout of the crisis in the 8th Senate did not allow the Senate to hit the ground running, as the Legislative House had to be repeatedly adjourned for recesses and finally for vacation. This is not the National Assembly we hope that we will start with when the issue of leadership crisis uh, caught up with the activities of the lawmaker. For a better part of the first four or five months of the National Assembly, it was crisis galore. Crisis ranging from the leadership of both houses that dovetail into the committee, chairmanship and the deputy chairman, which is still ravaging. And uh, from there, trying to get the confidence of Nigerians on our side to be seen as their own parliament that they have voted for and they are expecting so much from in this new dispensation of new government. And being the first time since 1999 that we'll have a new government entirely in place. So and uh, with the new government coming in with the change matrack that um, we will be bringing about changes in every facet of the uh, well, overall well-being of this country. So what really happened during the first few months of this administration as regards the National Assembly was not a good news, a palatable news at all. But uh, give or take, now that we have all resolved and believe that yes, uh, Nigeria is greater than each and every one of us or any individual, we have agreed to set aside all these differences. Uh, for issues that are still pending in court, we have allowed the judicial process to take its course and take its decision in that regard. But since legislative duties commenced in earnest, Senator Adiola has been discharging his responsibilities diligently to the admiration of all. He successfully presented a petition for one of his constituents, Sergeant Amos Olanion, who was wrongly and verbally suspended from the Nigerian police force 21 years ago without pay. Uh, 
The petition is receiving deserved attention as the Inspector General of Police and Sergeant Olanion have both appeared before the Ethics, Privileges and Petition Committee of the Senate and it is hoped that Sergeant Olanion will get justice after 21 years. When the report of the legislative agenda for the 8th Senate was being debated, Senator Adiola showed his prowess as a legislator par excellence as he addressed salient institutional issues of legislative development and capacity for legislature. I represent the good people of Lagos West Senatorial District, the largest senatorial district in Nigeria uh. in terms of population. <laughs> Mr. President, distinguished colleague, there is need for us to put NABLO to work. There is need for us. This year in, year out, that you find out that the executive will come with this document. Yes. And that is the only time you will find the executive romancing us because they want to take, about, take away our powers, which is the power of the pulse. After the business of lawmaking, one major power which we cannot afford to leave is the power of the pulse. And it's strictly with the budgeting process. Because they are fully aware that they have all the mechanism in place to put together this their own document. And each time this document is laid before us, they don't want us to even tamper with it, not to even look into the, post, the budgeting process. Mr. President, I believe this is one area we should look into critically. We should put NABRO to work. By now, NABRO is supposed to be getting together, put it together, an idea of what the 2016 budget will look like. It is not until when the federal government brings their budget, the executive brings their budget, lay their budget and give it to us. We need NABRO to work and get us this document so that we can start looking into it critically. Senator Adiola also shone like a bright star legislator that he is during the ministerial screening and confirmation of ministerial nominees. Only a legislator that knows his onions legislatively and professionally could have questioned ministerial nominees, Mrs. Kemi Adeoshun, the former Commissioner of Finance in Ogun State, and Dr. Israel Adewale, the Vice Chancellor of University of Ibadan. Yes, I won't go through your CV. I painstakingly look line by line and notice that you have a wealth of experience in the area of financing. Let me start by saying one. If, paraventure, you are posted to the Ministry of Trade and Investment, with your over 26 years of cognate experience in both private and public sectors, what and what will you be advising the Federal Executive Council in attracting foreign investment into this country. Three, with the burden of looking for finan finances in financing the capital expenditure of this country, and it is put before you that there is need for us to deregulate the downstream sector. Will you support, and why? Four, Looking at the T, <laughs> one, there are agencies of the government that are fully funded by the nation budget. Two, there are agencies of the government that are partly funded by the federal budget. And three, there are agencies that are self-financing. How will you implement the Treasury single account? Five, I put it before you. So far, his bill for an act to amend the Federal Capital Territory Law, CAP F6, Law of the Federation 2004 to correct double taxation has passed first reading in the journey towards passage, while a motion that seeks to investigate the disbursement of funds for cassava export is pending in his name. For the first time, we are having a budget that we are the benchmark of oil. It's not really a major factor as far as the revenue generation for this year's budget is concerned. Mr. President, the $38 per barrel of oil is only taking care of only just 820 billion naira. And Nigerians must be ready to tighten their belts 
and wastages must be reduced to the barest minimum. As the two instances that is in the body of this motion happen in my own senatorial district. The first one that happened in the Yanopaja area of Lagos is directly under my senatorial district. And the second one mentioned in Idimu in Alimoshu local government is also directly in my own senatorial district. Mr. President, distinguished colleague, I quite agree with the last speaker that says that these menace caused by these fuel tanker drivers needs to be addressed urgently. Mr. President, you will quite agree with me that as we speak, the Apapa area of Lagos is under siege. Under the siege of these tanker drivers who have decided to take over the major highways and thereby affecting businesses in this particular region. Mr. President, distinguished colleague, I think it is also high time that we emphasize on the issue of the movement of these trucks during the days that is that we have to put in place that these tankers can only can only move during the night. Are we not taking aback? The overall total budget of the federal government in this year alone is four point something trillion naira. And in one single day, mopping up money across federal government institutions, we're able to generate 2.5 trillion naira. And this same government, both past administration and now, I'm coming, I'm coming, please, 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 please. Mr. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. colleagues, please. More than 80% of this accident is caused by the bad state of our road. And on our live TV, on everything, you can see the state of this road and the deplorable state we have all this road. And one agency has been saddled with that responsibility in maintaining this road. That is the Federal Road Maintenance Agency, FEMA. And every time, each time you invite FEMA and even ask them, why are you not on this road? Go to Lagos Abekuta Expressway. Go to all of roads across the country. You will find out that they will give you reasons that there are no funds, that there is no money, and as such, there is little or nothing they could do. I have it on a reliable authority that one billion naira was sourced for FEMA during the tail end of last year. And as we speak, what is one billion naira going to do on all federal roads in Nigeria? Mr. President, are we aware as a Senate that there is an act setting up FEMA in 2002 and amended in 2007 that, among other things, where he states or mentioned the sources of revenue to FEMA? And I want us to pay a conscious attention, attention to this particular act. My dear colleague, with the kind permission of the chair, there is a portion I would like us to read under Section 14D of the Act, where he mentioned about the various funds of the agencies. He specifically mentioned that 5% users charge on pump price of petrol, diesel, and of which 40% will accrue to FEMA and 60% to be utilized by established state road maintenance agencies. Mr. President, distinguished colleague, it will not be out of place for us, if we go a step further, to carry out investigation by asking the agencies that are supposed to remit this money to FEMA, which is the Petroleum uh, Price Regulatory Agency, the PPRA. They are the ones deducting this money at source. And after deduction, they are expected to give 40% of, of this 5% to FEMA, and why the 60% be shared among the taxi states of the Federation. How sure are we that FEMA is receiving this money from PPRA? Findings have shown that many of the state governors are diverting money that 
is given to them from the universal basic education. In terms of the education imbalance and the monitoring of the application of this fund, I don't think it will be out of place for judicious application of this fund, 2% of the budget of the federal government, given to Ubek, to show to us evidence to show that yes, this money were disbursed and they were adequately applied for the project in which they are stated to be applied. I have my facts and figures, names and data of the state governors where there is diversion of this fund. And the same Ubek who sign off on this money that this money has been collected and that has been judiciously applied. Because your job does not stop at the counterpart funding. It is not about you are to get one billion, the state has got one billion, and you match it and say go. No. Your job includes for you to see that the one billion the federal government is supporting the state for is actually used for the purpose in which it was set for. So that is my own question for clarification and also for that documentation. Because now we all say or mention TSC, TSC, TSC. But we know that there is more to use than we are saying. You told my uh, our colleague now that 64 billion is standing to your credit on the TSC account, waiting for counterpart funding from the federal government. So, yes, sir. Um, no doubt, Senator Adiola has continued to give generously, as is his tradition to the people that elected him and will continue to do so. <laughs> Sinetong, oh, 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 o